to see people coming in. It's 1.55, we're gonna start right at two o'clock. So thank you for joining us, our playwright and one of our favorite poets whose piece Accidents of Being you can see later on in the festival. We're going to treat today because our artistic director is uh, Cynthia Mazant will be playing one of the piece, the characters in this very funny play, piece, very funny play. Uh, just a few minutes left before our production actually officially starts. And so happy to have you all here with us today. It's not quite two, so we're sure that there will be more people joining us. Um, we'll be ready to plunge in to um, another wonderful piece, another winner of our playwriting competition. I'll tell you more about the competition starting at two. And so you know, you know how this works, those of you who are with us right now. Glad you're here, very glad you're here. Excuse me while I just make sure I've got my ducks in a row, screens and script. We've got this very changeable weather here in State College, Pennsylvania, and it's been bouncing up and down 20 degrees a day. It's crazy good gardening weather today, tomorrow, and the next rest of the week. So, so a different kind of creativity digging in the dirt. <laughs> we got two more minutes before our official start to this session. Sometimes this few minutes waiting is uh, waiting time, but we're good. We're good. Countdown. And just give it another minute. If anybody else joins us right now. Okay. I'll check it out a moment. My students used to, my former students would watch the clock. So they wait for the bell to ring. We're just about there. Thank you for your patience. I can't say enough. Thank you for your presence. I know that you're going to enjoy what we have to share with you tonight. Today, it's afternoon. Hi, welcome. My name is Josephine Perron. I am delighted to uh, be a participant, host of one of the um, one of my favorite things of this Central Pennsylvania Dance and Theater Fest, which is hard to say because it's all a wonderful fest the entire time. The Theater and Dance Fest. This is our fourth year, and uh, second year zooming it. So um, glad to have you here. What we're up for right now is uh, the reading of one of the three winners of our new play, Playwriting Competition. 
And this is a real joy because um, this year we had 41 one act plays submitted and three of those were chosen for, for the reading today. We had 105 short plays, 10 act, 10 minute plays. And from that 105, our terrific committee of um, readers and judges chose six. So it's quite a production, the whole fest and the, the wonderful playwriting competition. So what uh, will happen now is I will, excuse me, I will introduce to you the play and give you some background on the playwright. Our wonderful performers will read the play and this is a table reading, so uh, you won't see sets and costumes. And then after the play is performed, we invite you to please participate in a question answer talk back uh, session with the actors and the um, playwright and me and uh, our director will come back. So the title of this play is A Lovely Day for a Boating Trip and to Kill Your Spouse. It was written by Lindsay Brown. Lindsay Brown is a New Zealand high school teacher of both English and drama. She has a passion for the performing arts as a writer, performer, teacher, and student, including an, a master's of script writing from Auckland University of Technology. Lindsay has had pieces performed in London, New York, Hollywood, Florida, Houston, Pittsburgh, Atlanta, and Kentucky, Sydney, Queenstown, and Auckland. In 2020, she was the recipient of the Playwrights Association of New Zealand Outstanding Achievement Award. Other successes to date include coming second in the New Zealand Playwrights Association One Act Play Competition 2018, being shortlisted for the New Zealand Plays for the Young Competition 2018, and having a piece published within a collection of New Zealand short plays called Septet. We are thrilled to have the opportunity to have Central Pennsylvania Festival of the, um, excuse me, Central Pennsylvania Theater and Dance Fest to that list, a very impressive resume. Thank you for being here. A Lovely Day for a Boating Trip and to Kill Your Spouse by Lindsay Brown. The synopsis, the open water, a small rowboat and a marriage on the brink just how far would you go? How far would you trust your spouse? The 30 minute comedy for two characters. Those characters are Gloria, married to Graham, appreciates the finer things in life and will do anything to keep them. Graham, 40s, married to Gloria, wealthy, successful, and self-serving. The setting, Play is set with the single small rowboat in the middle of the stage. Gloria will be read today by Cynthia Mazant and the uh, Graham, Bruce Clow. The play begins with both Gloria and Graham sitting in the rowboat. Graham is rowing them out to sea. Please turn I, it there we go. <clears throat> Thank you. Nice day. Lovely. Clear skies. Not a cloud in sight. You're comfortable? Very. You? I couldn't be happier. It's not too rustic for you. Oh, I think it's quaint. Really? Really. I appreciate the simple things in life now and then. Oh, so do I. I mean, it reminds us how the other half lives. Although it is quite old, I hope it's seaworthy. Oh, I'm sure it will outlist both of us. I'm sure it will. <laughs> And our driver is picking us up when? Well, I, I told him I would call him on our return, so we have all the time in the world. Wonderful. 
Another sandwich? No, 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 not just yet. Maybe, maybe when we stop. Hmm. We're quite a way from shore. And just a little further. Gloria checks her phone. She then holds it up higher, trying to find reception. No luck? Not a single bar. I haven't had any for a while now. I'm sure you'll survive. Oh, I'm sure I will. <laughs> you know what? I, I think I will have that sandwich. He stops rowing and puts the oars back in the boat. Far enough? Far enough. She passes him a sandwich from a lunch container. It's so quiet out here. No, not a soul around. Perfect spot. Yes, a perfect spot. Graham. Yes, Gloria. I know you brought me out here to kill me. Graham starts choking on his sandwich. Oh, water? She hands him a bottle of water, which he quickly drinks. But you see, darling, I plan on killing you first. <laughs> How's your sandwich? He throws it overboard. Oh, I'm not going to poison you with club sandwiches. Oh, much too obvious. The police would be right at my door. She offers him another sandwich from the container, but he declines. So what's your plan? Oh, after you. No, 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 ladies first. Age before beauty. <sighs> uh, I haven't yet decided. I, I, I have a few options. Oh, a few. Impressive. Yeah, I, I could shoot you. Shoot me. Yes. You could, but I don't think you will. Why not? Because a gun wound would leave too much of a trail. I'm assuming, of course, that you were foolish enough to bring your own gun. Amateur. It's not my only option, though. Go on. Uh, uh, you fell overboard. I told you not to stand in the boat, but as usual, you refused to listen, and you hit your head on the way down, and I, the distraught husband, desperately tried to save you, but you got lost to the sea. Tragic. Isn't it? Your turn. Oh, mine is nothing as dramatic as yours. Just a simple drowning. The boat sprung a leak. I, being the better swimmer, made it to shore. You, with your one-stroke form doggy paddle, unfortunately perished. I do not doggy paddle. Besides, it won't work. Why? Two reasons. Firstly, if the boat was leaking, I'd have put on a life jacket and they come with this, the high ridge. Did they? Why, I checked they were there before we left. Is that before or after I packed away all the food and drink? You didn't. Unfortunately, there just wasn't room for both and I know how hungry you get. So I just left them on shore. It still won't work. Why? Because the boat was checked out before I hired it. They'll know where the, there were no leaks. But what if one of us tripped over this little plug thing? I didn't just sit here for the view, darling. I pull this out and the water will start pouring in pretty quickly, especially if I accidentally lose it over the edge in all the drama. That's a small hole. I'm sure I can find something else to fill it with. Really? She pulls out the plug. Water starts entering the boat. Gloria, what are you doing? What are you doing? Put it back in. You'll sink us. Go to... You'll sink us. That's the plan. Have you gone insane? Gloria! Fine. She puts the plug back in. Well, that's a shame. My heels are all wet now. So that's your plan, to drown me? Well, not me. You drown yourself, caused by your own vanity and refusing to put a life jacket on before leaving shore, just like I knew you would. Yeah, but you're not guaranteed to make it either. I mean, that shore is a lot further than it looks. 
And it's been a long time since you were in the water. Is it? Or could my Tuesday book club really be a ladies swimming squad? But and our coach, very attractive. Used to be an Olympian, you know, Australian. He says, I'm quite the swimmer. Your move, Graham. Graham pulls out a Swiss army knife from his pocket. Oh, put it away. You know you can't use it on me without putting a bullseye on your own back for murder. I don't plan on using it on you. He moves to the edge of the boat and holds one arm over the water. He then moves the blade up to it. Now remind me, dear, why it is that you never join my family in our yearly jaunt to the Bahamas. Um, well, you can't deny that it's the launch is well appointed. And with you being quite the swimmer, could it be because of the irrational fear you have of sharks? It's a long way from here to the shore, Gloria. Who knows what's lurking beneath the surface? This isn't the Bahamas, Graham. There hasn't been a shark sighting in years. It's too cold. The water is perfectly safe. Otherwise, I wouldn't risk it. Now, just because people haven't seen them doesn't mean they're not there. Especially if you encourage them with a little bit of blood. Don't you dare. <laughs> I'm, I'm warning you, Graham. Stop it, this isn't funny. Graham, Graham, please. He slowly puts the knife away. It would appear, my dear, that we are at a bit of a stalemate. What do you want? To be rid of you. Then divorce me. What, and lose half my fortune in lawyer fees? I don't think so. Well, as long as I get what I deserve, I'm sure the process can be amicable. <laughs> Yeah, if you really believe that, you wouldn't be on this boat trying to drown me. I told you, you drown yourself. Semantics. No, I think we can both agree that the only winners in a divorce would be the lawyers. Money-grubbing pariahs. They took 50 million from the tailors, you know. Yeah, I know. And half of that was because they couldn't agree on who got the damn dog. Oh, thank God we don't have a dog. Yeah, but we do have children. And that always makes it more expensive. Speaking of children, now, is it just the four of them I have to worry about afterwards? After what? After you die. Oh, you're assuming I, I die first. Well, let's just run with it. For now, after you die, will it just be the four I have to worry about or will there be a bastard or two hovering to contest your will? Two. 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 And dare I ask who their mothers are? Well, if it comes to that, the information is all with my lawyers. Of course it is. Well, <laughs> I suppose I should thank you for your honesty. What about you? What about me? Any surprises? Meaning? Our own children, are they all mine? Of course! I can't believe you'd accuse me otherwise. Fine. Three are yours, one's not. Which one? Why, so you can write them out of your will? Well, it'd be too late to write them out if I'm dead. True. Jack's not yours. Jack, he looks just like me. Exactly. He's your brother's. Stevens. No, of course not. He's David's. David's? Oh, don't look at me like that. You were in the south of France at that time with that Am Amazonian looking model. She was an ambassador for the company. Ha, ambassador. Well, then I hope you paid her well for her extra services. Well, at least you kept it in the family helps to keep the fortune intact. So what now? I kill you. Or I kill you. Either way, the boat's coming back one person later. Oh, the de deposit's in my name. Oh, I think I can handle losing the deposit. 
Look, 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 what's that? What? What? Where? In the water. And it, it couldn't be, could it? What? What, what did you see? I, I, I just thought I saw something in the water. It's, it's probably nothing. I, I told you, the water is too cold. They have a swim series here every summer, and no one has ever sighted a shark. There's always a first, isn't there? I hate you. Ditto. Did you ever love me? That's an interesting thing to ask someone you're, you're hoping will drown. Humor me. No, I can't say I ever really loved you. I mean, we had lust. I mean, my God, you used to be gorgeous, but love, no, no, no. Graham suddenly realizes there is water leaking into the boat. Gloria has pulled the plug out again. Gloria, we're leaking. Lust. 15 years and you felt lust? Well, you, you wanted honesty. I gave it to you. Now, now put it back in. Don't you dare. You, you don't want to do that. I loved you. With all my heart, I loved you. And, and you felt nothing? Well, if the, if the boat goes down, so do you. And the sharks will tear you limb from limb. I don't care. I'll take my chances. 15 years of my life wasted. Gloria, don't. Just tell me what you want. I want my youth back. I can't give you that. Well, then I want the country house. You can't be serious. Oh, I am serious. Deadly. Never. Then enjoy your swim. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, you, you can have the country house. Just put the plug back in. And the vineyards. Like hell, you'll get the vineyards. She throws the plug slightly in the air. No, 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 no. She catches it. Fine, fine. You can have the vineyards and the country house. Just put that stupid plug back in. Gloria puts the plug back in. You can have the townhouse. How very kind of you. Well, I suppose I'm so rarely in the city. I want the company shares. If you wish. And the car collection. Mm, not the Porsche. All of it. Then I keep the jewelry, including the family heirlooms. Oh, yeah, you mean my family heirlooms? Well, they are so very pretty on me. Not a chance. Then prepare to get wet. It's a shame though, because my shoes are already ruined. God, you are a piece of work. I shall take that as a compliment. Wait, you, you really want the jewelry? Yes. Then you can have it. If you can pass a lie detector test proving that you did actually love me. Didn't I just say that oh, I- that Little burst of emotion, oh, it was very impressive. I mean. I'll give you that. And I would so like to believe it is to be true. I mean, that you want me dead out of necessity, not from lack of love. And yet. I loved your money <laughs> and your body. Well, the way it used to be. <laughs> well played, Gloria, well played. So what now? I don't know. You still want me dead? That depends. On? On whether we can continue negotiations amicably. Hey, we've done well so far. <laughs> we have, haven't we? Yeah. So, the country home and the vineyards go to you, townhouse to me. I get the cars and the company shares, jewelry, Build a negotiation. Uh, uh, what else do we need to cover? Well, there are the antiques. We've amassed quite a collection. Might I suggest that they stay with whichever houses they are currently in? It will save in moving costs. <laughs> Meaning you end up with most of them. Perhaps. 
I'll give you the antiques. I want the football season tickets and uh, tickets to ballet. But you hate the ballet. Well, it's not for my benefit. <laughs> so the current mistress likes the ballet. Fine. The seats are yours, but I get first pick of the staff. Agreed. Uh, is that it? Have we covered everything? I believe so. So do I. Wow, that was, that was easier than I thought it would be. And nobody needed to die. <laughs> oh, always a bonus. <laughs> oh, now shall we return to shore? This boat really is the pits. I thought you called it quaint. I lied. What the lady wants, the lady shall get. Graham picks up the oars and starts rowing them back to shore. Wait, wait. What? The children. What about the children? We forgot to decide who gets them. Graham, stop rowing. Come on, Gloria. No, we need to decide. Stop. <sighs> you happy now? Mildly. So, what do we do? We need to decide something. There's nothing to decide. They go with you, obviously. Why me, obviously? Because you're their mother. <laughs> and you are their father. But I have work. So do I. You, you decorate homes. I have a national interior design company. Which my business sponsors. No, no, no. You, you can take them. I'll, I'll pay for an extra nanny. I'm not taking all four children. Oh, I mean it. She looks at the sink plug. You can't keep using that card. Can't I? Okay, fine, fine, fine. We'll, we'll take two each. Which two? Well, obviously I'm not taking Jack. See, I knew I shouldn't have told you. You're treating him differently now. Well, you can't expect me to choose him. No, I'll take Thomas and Kara. What's wrong with Jillian? Well, nothing's wrong with Jillian. She's just weird. But, but I'll take her if it means I don't have to take Jack. Fine. I get Kara and Jack and you get Jillian and Thomas. But I'm sending them to boarding school. You can send them at six, can't you? Five. And I'll send the other two as well. That way they can't accuse us of splitting them up. Hey, see if we can get a family discount. Ooh, good thinking. Is that it? Can I keep rowing? You may. You know, <laughs> it really isn't that hard. What's that? This whole amicable divorce thing, perhaps I should write a book on it. And I know just what I'll call it, amicable to the death. <laughs> I think it's catchy, what do you think? I think I'd expect a cut. Oh, when I dedicated to you, of course, to my darling Graham, may I be the only wife who wishes you dead. <laughs> Graham. Yes, Gloria? Would you really have killed me? Most likely. And you? Oh, absolutely. I would have happily left you to drown. Well, that's good to know. But at least now I don't have to play the grieving widow. How exhausting that would have been. <laughs> Sandwich? No, thank you. She helps herself to one. Tell me, how did you know? What? That I was planning on killing you today. Because I wanted you to. What? Oh, careful, dear. You don't want to drop those. Wait, you, you wanted me to? Oh, yes. Why? I've been planting seeds for months now, ever since I joined the swim squad. What kind of seeds? Oh, you know, just the usual. Adding movies to your watch list. You've watched quite a few nautical ones lately, haven't you? Then there was leaving the newspaper open on horror divorce articles. Remember that poor garrison couple? <laughs> and the children were a great help as well. Children? You didn't enjoy your birthday present from Jack? The book? A bestseller about a man who kills his wife 
on a boating trip. I did wonder if that one was a little obvious, but then in for a penny, in for a pound. Well, well, well. I guess I underestimated you. You have our entire marriage. Have I? Hmm, perhaps I have. Graham stops rowing. You know, Something rather intriguing about a cunning woman. Is there? Something quite sexy. He starts to bring the oars in. And you don't know that making a deal always makes me... Horny. Amorous. Oh, <laughs> Graham, I tried to kill you. Well, I tried to kill you first. We, we could call it foreplay. Hmm. And what makes you think I'm in the mood? Money. You, you just got a lot of it today. And, and we both know how much, well, that turns you on. Says me. It might. So what do you say? Shall we? <laughs> what? <laughs> Here on the boat? It's not very comfortable. He takes off his jacket and lays it down. And there's not a lot of room. We'll have to be creative. You still doing your yoga? I might be. Good, good. So? You're not allowed to talk. And neither are you. And I want to be on top. To begin with. And the Porsche, I want it. Then you take one more of the children. Never. No child, no Porsche. No Porsche, no. He suddenly kisses her. At first she's surprised, but then returns it encouragingly. Oh, Gloria. No talking. The kiss becomes increasingly physical. Graham lies back on the jacket. Gloria climbs on top. He can't help but make excited noises, but each time he speaks, she quietens him. Suddenly, there's a stroke of lightning. Gloria pulls back. Wait, wait, what was, Graham, was that lightning? Of course not. He pulls her back into his arms. Thunder can then be heard from afar, quietly at first. I think that was thunder. Uh, look, I'm sure it's nothing. He tries again to continue the seduction. At first he is successful, but then there is another round of lightning. She bolts up. Graham! What? That was lightning! Graham, still in a daze, slowly sits up. There is the sound of thunder, this time louder. Graham quickly climbs out from under her. Don't, don't panic. I'm sure it's miles away. We just, we just need to be head back to shore, quickly. He picks up the oars and starts rowing. Gloria holds on to the edge of the boat. You're not rowing fast enough. I'm trying. Oh, God, look over there. The sky, it's practically black. The hell did that come from? And the swells picked up. D did you even check the weather report? When I get it, it was blue skies before. It's spring now, you fool. You know how changeable it gets. But if you're so clever, why didn't you check? He keeps rowing. There is periodic thunder and lightning getting closer each time. It's getting closer. No kidding. Oh, Graham, it's raining. Do you know how much this outfit cost? Shut up and help me row. Me? I, I don't know how to row. You learn fast. There's an extra set of oars in the back, unless, of course, you left those behind as well. She moves to find the spare oars. The rain starts getting heavier. I've got them. Now, what do I do? Just stick them in the water and row. Don't yell at me. As she tries to get back to her seat, she trips accidentally, pulls out the sink plug. You idiot. I didn't do it on purpose. Plug it back in, plug it back in. I, I can't, I can't find it. What? I said I can't find it. Gloria, without that plug, this, this boat is going to sink. It's, it's got to be here somewhere. I, I think it fell overboard. The rowboat is sinking further. I'm going to die and I'm gonna die at sea with you. Gloria gives up on the plug and instead takes Graham's jacket from the seat and stuffs one of the sleeves into the hole, twisting it in to try and jam it. That's not gonna work. It should at least slow it down, unless you've got a better plan. She finishes shoving it in. They both look at the plug. See, 
it's working ish. Now what? Don't look at me. I'm not the one who lost the damn plug. Useless. That's what you are. We we need to flip the boat over. What? We flip it over like in that movie we saw. Then we use the boat as a buoy to float on. And then what? Then once the higher place realizes we haven't returned, they'll send someone out to get us. We'll be saved. And how are they going to find us? My GPS. It may be out of service, but they can still track it. Now, come on, help me. There's no point. Why? What? Because I turned your GPS off. What? When? Probably while you were throwing away the life jackets. How could you be that stupid? Oh, well. Well, that's the pot calling the kettle black. Gloria starts taking her shoes off. Then I'm I'm going to have to swim for it. What? I'll swim to shore and send back help. You're never going to make it. I told you I've been doing swim squad. Look at the current, Gloria. It's picked up with a storm. You try and swim, you'll only get pushed out to sea further. Well, I've got to at least try. We've only got a little while until the boat starts filling up again. I'll take my phone and swim until I get some form of reception. Come on, help me find it. They both look for her phone. Graham finds it first. She puts her hand out to take it from him, but he pauses. Graham? How do I know you'll send help back? What? Of course I will. Why wouldn't I? Because only a half hour ago we were plotting my murder. Well, that was different. Was it? No, no, I will not let you leave me. He throws the phone into the sea. What the hell did you do that for? I am not dying out here alone. Oh, so we both die then. If we have to. You are unbelievable. You know what? Screw it. She starts taking off any excess layers of clothing and moves to the edge of the boat, ready to climb over. Where are you going? Swimming to shore. I told you, you'll never make it. I'd rather die trying. And if I do make it, I'll be sure to send the rescue boat in the wrong direction. So long, my darling. Just as she is about to jump, Graham suddenly leaps up, grabs the knife, and stabs her in the arm. Oh my God! Oh, I, you, you stabbed me! You stabbed me! Now just try and swim away from me now with all that blood pouring out of your arm. The sharks will be able to smell you a mile away. I told you there are no sharks around here. Ah! Really? What, what are those then? He indicates a shape in the water. She sees it too and can't help but let out a scream. They, they can smell your blood already. Are you still keen for that swim? Oh, shut up. I hate you. I, I hate you more than I've hated anyone in my entire life. Just trust me, dear. The feeling is mutual. Oh, look, shh. There's more of them. Oh, for fuck's sake, Graham. I, I think I'm going to be sick. Graham starts to take off his belt. Here, here. Use this to stop the bleeding. Ah, that hurts. And stop moving. There, that's done. That should slow the blood down. Thank you. We're gonna die, aren't we? Probably, but at least we won't die alone. I can feel the water seeping in again. Yeah, it's, it's pulling around the edges of the, the sleeve. Can, can't you stop it? Uh, we'll probably start going under soon. Oh God, we're going to die. Did, did you really never love me? Ever? I loved you too much. That's the problem. Liar. Thank you. The lady wants, the lady shall get. She smiles, then leans in to kiss him. He returns the kiss, placing the knife down in the process. Gloria then grabs the knife and stabs him in the back. What the 
Oh, Gloria, you stabbed me. I'm sorry, but you stabbed me first. Yeah, just a little bit and in the arm. I mean, you got me eye and a side. I, I can bleed out. Oh. I had to get you enough for the sharks to get you first. Oh my God, it hurts. Tell me about it. Ah. Stop rocking the boat. I should have killed you when I had the chance. Stop rocking the boat. I'm bleeding out here. Unless you want me to stab you again, stop rocking this fucking boat. He forces himself to stop. She puts the knife down. The boat slowly stops rocking. They both tend to their own wounds. The presence of death is looming. I can feel us sinking. Soon the water will be filled with our blood. How, how much do you think it will hurt being eaten by sharks? Probably about as much as being stabbed. Oh, come here. He pulls her in for a bloody embrace. So this is it. This is it. At least the lawyers didn't get anything. <laughs> we sure showed them. They hold each other. Let's see you in hell, my dear. See you in hell. They share a final kiss as the lights slowly fade. Death is imminent. There is an increasing sound of a sinking boat, then the splash of them falling into the water. We are left with the sound of their final screams and Gloria yelling out, Take him first! Take him first! End of play. Thank you both so very much. What fun. What fun. So much fun. So much fun. Okay, now we need to let, we want to let the, um, the attendees come on in. Uh, we need to do a little uh, techno fussing around. Okay, I will do that. So um, I'm going to go off camera so I can take care of that for a sec. You can start talking. Okay, so thank you. Thank you so much. So um, those of you who are um, in our audience, you should be able to turn on your camera and your uh, mic so that you can um, please, please join into a discussion. Our playwright is here, our terrific actors, and uh, some other guests, some other playwrights, writers, actors, the co-founder of Tempest Productions. Welcome to everybody. We'll wait for Cynthia to come on back. There she is. All right. So questions for the for the actors, for the playwright. It's wonderful to have our playwrights here with us. Lindsay, say hi. Unmute, Lindsay, you're muted. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for joining us from when we say playwrights from all around the world, we really do mean it. Nice to nice to have you joining us. Thanks. Thank Anybody you. have questions or comments? You can also use chat to send Lindsay any questions or, or talk. Shout we'll out. take a look at that. We did promote everyone to a panelist. So if you want to pop on, your mics are available and you could pop on screen with us too. I will monitor a little bit. Well, I thought this was great because uh, it seemed like sort of a familiar situation and yet uh the development was un unexpected and uh I, I grew to to uh feel close to both characters <laughs> and uh and uh and, and i didn't want either one of them to drown so i was like just <laughs> pulling for both somehow it was just um sort of reassuring in a way to see them go together even though it was a tragic end <laughs> no no there if there's still hope for one of them <laughs> Oh, sure. You keep dreaming. <laughs> I still had hope for you, actually. <laughs> Lindsay, I found these characters so deliciously despicable. <laughs> and I love how you just kept on upping the ante. And there were so many places where I thought it was going to end. Um, and this is when I was reading it and then also hearing it, watching it being performed. 
Um, and, and you just kept on taking me higher and higher and it was just wonderful. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, that was that. Yeah, it was. I just knew that um, I had my first line that they wanting to kill, kill me. And then I just knew they had to die. And so I just <laughs> knew what I wanted between there and the end. So that was, that was the fun part. But in all honesty, you almost, when I heard you say before, um, was it you, Michael, you said that you actually, you favor them. And it's like, how did you make them? Yeah, they, they're awful, but yet you kind of like them. Oh, <laughs> which yeah. Is, which is sort of fun. Yeah. I mean, it's like, and I think who was saying it at the one o'clock live at one? Was it Kara that would have, was talking about the 90 10 rule, right? That that 10%, there's something still there, right? You know, Absolutely. that that we recognize and we're like, they're delightful to play. Like she's delicious. I'm just like, Oh my God, I want, I want more, which is like what I was texting you or, or emailing you at a very early time for me, but probably yeah. what the middle of the day, middle of the evening for you. Yep. yep. I'm like, what else do you have? I want them. <laughs> That's fine. I think also the relationship is part of what's so delightful. It's, um, it's, it's, more than just each character individually it's the way they've clearly been married for a long long time they know how to get each other's they know what what how to what exactly to say to get the other one agitated and the, i loved the bouncing back and forth because you know we think there's a reconciliation and then he stabs her <laughs> i think that builds the tension and the comic tension is it's wonderful. So, here's a question for you, Lindsay. Um, we obviously changed your their ages, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if you'd seen it, you know, with a 40 something, although Bruce, I think I can pull it off, right? Um, you can too, we can do it. So how does it play for you with older actors playing them as opposed to the- No, 40s? I just had 40 plus. So it could have been 40, 50, 60. Which okay. you, you know, you guys thought you guys were early 40s. Um, so no, it could be it could be any, it isn't you had to have been together long enough and you had to have had the kids. Yeah. Um, that you know you've had enough, but you've still got enough that you think you've got plenty of life still to live, so it's worth killing them for. That's a great way to say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyone? Uh, I I thought it was a terrific play. I was, I felt great for a half hour being filthy rich. <laughs> Fortunately, I've fallen back off the cliff here into reality. I do want to say one thing and I, and I didn't know what to do about it. And I never intentionally edit or something. And I know that it, the word, the word bloody Americans don't use it. Mm -hmm. or damn or fucking or what you know that we don't use it and it would have been sort of a sore thumb if I said bloody and yet, yet bloody fits the show so um just wanted to throw that I don't know dichotomy you know, whatever. I think that's a thing for when you are writing I, I'm writing from New Zealand and yeah, I no. and you you you've got to be careful with your colloquialisms or you know the slang you might use and I, I do consciously try and write write for a wider audience but right. and I get and I'm I like to think I'm not so precious that I'm, I'm quite content for those those words to be changed to fit uh, you know I think if I was working with a director more I'd be if they were, they were to say to me we don't use buddy can I change too or vice versa or another country we don't call it this we would call it I'm so I think those things need to be changed uh, right. you know especially where you are setting it you know, like where I said that I want the country house, it could be the Hamptons. It could have been the blah, blah, blah. But I can't, I don't know where it's going to be picked up. Mm -hmm. So I, I totally take that in and I would be very open to a director saying these words would make such a difference to us um, and go for it. Right. So totally take that on board. Totally. Right. Lindsay, I just enjoyed it so much. Thank you. It was uh, really excellent. And um, and I, I would just found myself wondering, um, obviously it's a sort of a dark comedy, you know, that, um, and is this a similar, is this a style for you? Is this, uh, do you often write um, pieces like this or was it? 
Um, not so extreme. Um, I, I like comedy. I like, I, um, and I was actually telling um, Cynthia slash Gloria, um, I actually did write a follow-up for this one because I do see it being a full piece and it's called A Lovely Day for Boating Trip and then in brackets, and to get rid of a body. And they actually do refer back to the couple about, because something happens, they do refer back. And unfortunately, a whole family of sharks did get you guys. Um, uh, so I don't know, I just say, I, I do like a bit of fun with sort of, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's darker than my normal. I don't normally kill everyone. Um, <laughs> but I do like a, a twist where you are kind of, yeah, if it makes sense. Sure, absolutely. I know, and that's what, like, when you had said there's might be even be the third one, I'm like, these are just Yeah, just finishing the fun. third moment. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a lovely day for boating trip and to escape your own wedding. So, that, so the idea is that could be a whole <laughs> night. Um, the first would be 30 minutes. The wedding one's 20 minutes. It's, it's written, it's just not crafted. Um, and then the other one's an hour. So it'd be a whole evening of it. <laughs> it's lovely. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then production-wise, you're buying one boat, right? Well, Are we you know, okay? you need two. Everyone, everyone needs two boats, okay. but they're quite easy. Like they can just do the outlines if need be. That's the whole point. Is I want it to be can be used quite simply. If you want to go theatrics, you can go theatrics, but it's not needed. Right. Yeah. All right. The the dialogue carries it. Yeah, that's that's the point. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I do about... write a lot more for females. Mm -hmm. I have a lot more female characters usually. Hmm. We good. like that in this company. That's yes. good for us. Yes. Yeah. Very good for like, us. Especially older female characters. You know? <laughs> well, again, that's where I'm writing more. The, the next one, Boy. the one that had a 80 year old in it. So, now, yeah, so I do write um, for older. Yeah. That's wonderful. Thank you. Um, Lindsay, Cynthia, you, you and I were talking about just in terms of how this would also lend itself to a film a filmic medium rather than, or in addition to uh, theatrical. I mean, I, I, think it, I think it would work absolutely wonderfully on stage with the minimal, you know, um, props and everything, but uh, a film version. Um, Lindsay, have you considered that at all? Um, no, no I, um, no, I haven't. It's only guess it's because I'm just writing at the stage and I, I work, I'm a teacher as well. If so, you know, if opportunities come up and you they get something and picked it up, then mm -hmm. then absolutely. Yeah, it's one of those things that I could I could just see as a delightful short too. Do you know what I mean? Because then you've got camera angles coming at both of them, right? You know, and it would just take it into a different, you know, would just make it a different piece. But it I think would play delightfully. Yeah. And I think, you know, Nicole too is like some of your pieces would work so beautifully you know, filmed as well. And um, yeah, not that I'm filming anymore <laughs> after this, after this festival, I'm just like, I'm just, no. no more Zooms. Joe has to film next time. <laughs> you, you need to unmute, Joe. We can't hear you, hon. Muted, you Joe. Unmute, Joe. There she goes. No, I said uh, we're in big trouble if I'm in charge of all the filming. <laughs> but um, I agree, actually, though, because even when I was looking at the shorts, I thought there were a couple that could really be done film-wise as well that it could work really nicely. But this was delightful. I have to say, even though you guys were despicable, you still didn't want them to die. Mm. So that was actually a very nice, it was a good ending, you know, because they weren't too, we didn't have too much redemption uh, possible. <laughs> well, I keep on hoping that a helicopter will suddenly just descend oh, the and rescue them. <laughs> yeah. It's, the <laughs> it's his helicopter. They forgot to negotiate that, but he'd already. Exactly. <laughs> now we're no, waiting. he's going first. The sharks are taking him. <laughs> yeah, it was fun, though. Lots of fun to watch. Lots of fun to listen to. Dialogue was great. It's just, I mean, that's the thing that's been wonderful about the festival so far, both both of your works, Lindsay and Nicole, just this, these delicious words and mm -hmm. these wonderful characters, right? So, you know, oftentimes, and even, you know, in very commercial theater, you get one or the other. Sometimes we don't get both. And I, you know, your writing has both. Mm -hmm. It's just lovely, lovely, lovely. And we, I would like to just... Um, 
say I hope that that we have been of some help to you. It's been so much fun as performers, um, but I hope that you've benefited some by hearing the pieces. And to say also that um, it has been quite a challenge that Cynthia has done an amazing job um, turning on a dime last March when we needed to do this and um, we learned a lot. And one of the things we think is um, has been interesting, uh, unexpected benefit is um, this Zoom thing seems to be very, uh, seems to work really well for a, a table read. And uh, because everyone's in close up all the time and wondered if you, um, you know, as performer, you felt that and as playwrights, was this helpful to you? To make the best of <laughs> oh, very very much so for me um because i was the voices are normally in my head and i i do have to do the characters and sometimes you forget to breathe you know you're trying to do both parts and read the directions um but just to hear it actually it did flow it did actually the, the bite backs did bite back the way they were meant to um and and, and seeing the rhythm was, was just it was really helpful good 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 yeah i do yeah. think like Josephine, go ahead, Nicole. Sorry. No, no, that's fine. No, I, I just want to echo that. I, I, I agree. Just hearing the red, and and we talked in uh, in the earlier session about facial expressions, you know, and um, and how that 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 really um, that's really helpful for me to see as well, hearing the rhythm, but then also, um, you know, seeing characters, their facial expressions, not only when they're speaking, but when they're reacting to, um, and yeah, it's been really helpful. Yeah, I mean, what's been nice about it from our point of view has been, you know, you think about that table reader, you think about we're all behind black books or standing on stage and we've distanced, right? So a lot of those early readings, those early stage that are just basic readings, not fully staged, right? Where you're walking, it's for you to listen. It's because you're not seeing anything happen. So the minute we get here, you get a little bit of reaction, you know, so you can still listen, but then you get to hear all the words, right? Like you get to play with X, Y, Z. And also like Bruce is in New Jersey, right? Joe is in New Jersey. Um, so the fact that, especially for the festival, what? Yes, and yeah, Lindsay's in New Zealand. So, um, and Nicole, you're in Iowa? Iowa, yeah. yeah. Well, and the central Pennsylvania. <laughs> Right. And so part of it is, hmm, how do we continue this so that we have you as part of that dialogue, as opposed to, you know, I think one of our first years, one of the playwrights flew in from Seattle and we were just like, oh, OK, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but, you know, how, you know, you can kind of not do that on a regular basis. But it's been nice to get different people from different time zones together and be able to, you know, to just do this. So. Unexpected benefit. Yep. So thank you all again. Nicole's piece is at what time? I gotta grab a grab a four o'clock. So you are up next. Yep. All right. In about six minutes. No, four o'clock. No. It's only 254. I'm okay. Sorry, Eastern time. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of that going on this, right? Because we have yeah. a couple actors that are in New Orleans. What's one over? whatever one, uh, central, and then a couple yeah. people coming in from mountain. And I was like losing my mind, but, um, yeah, so four o'clock big top love is up. And then six o'clock we end out with serving the story. These are taped and we will send you the recordings. If you know, you can do whatever you want with them, but, and then we'll be talking Lindsay. I had said before, as we move into doing additional readings about how might we, you know, how might it go the next step if you're interested. So yeah, definitely. And, and before we go, I just want to say thank you. I think you guys did a great job. I was, because you, I know jokes are coming up and I get nervous, like, oh, will that one pull off? And just, I just love the way the timing between the two of you. And I just felt, yeah, you, you guys created a relationship that you just, you felt like you'd been in each other's presence for too long. <laughs> and that really came across. So thank you for that. Thanks. Bruce is fun to play with. <laughs> and you, wonderful. <laughs> all right so we're gonna head out then thank you everybody and anyone else who was still out there i know there's thank still you. a few participants out there thanks for joining us and hopefully come, come back. back at four o'clock please come back thank you see so you much. at four thank you wow.